Hello everyone, um, good morning once again. Um, you are welcome to our community office hours. Today we are going to learn something new. Um, we want to start with uh, introduction to Wikipedia. As a new community, I feel it is important for us to know um, some of the basic rules that governs Wikipedia instead of like just writing um, articles in Dagbani, very good articles or very good content, but we sometimes, sometimes don't follow the principles of Wikipedia. So I think this will be an opportunity for us to, you know, share and learn more about how we can contribute quality articles to the Dagbani Wikipedia. So welcome once again. If you can hear me, my name is Sadek Shahadu. A team member of the Dagban Wikimedians user group. Um, so you can just say hi to someone if you are on the call or just mention your name. Then let's start as we always do. So I nominate Abu Wadud to introduce himself. If you can hear me, Abdul Wadud. Mugis, yes. a microphone. So please um, enable your microphone so we can hear you. Okay, Abdul Wadud, please go on. Yes. I'm Al Hassan Abdul Wadud, and my username is Achira Betam Sumle. Okay. Yes. Nice. So um, the next person I see is Mohammed Awa. Mohamed Awa, can you introduce yourself? Okay. If you cannot hear me, um, who else is here? For now, you always join without a microphone. It will be difficult for you to contribute. I don't know what is wrong. You can figure that out when you go off and you are joining. They always prompt you, join with audio or video. Uh, so make sure you enable that to be able to join. Um, I can still see that you don't have your audio. Chifo, I can see you don't have audio. So please make sure you enable it. Okay. Chifo now have his audio. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, uh, please introduce yourself. Bashir, you are the only person now um, having that, if you can go off and then maybe, Hello, sorry. yeah, we can hear you. Go on. Wow. Yeah, I can, I, uh, I can hear you right. I was still um, uh, attending uh, on the people on the platform. Okay, all right. So we're saying that people should introduce their names and then I was calling for participation. Okay. So please introduce yourself. Okay, Chirifo, I can see Chirifo. Can you introduce yourself? And then Mugis, any of you can go ahead and introduce yourself before we begin. Okay. Everyone is muted, but if you can hear me, I would like to proceed. Feel free to uh, I me. think I'll I'll start with the introduction. Okay. Yes, my name is Al Hassan Mohammed Awal. Okay. Uh, I'm a co-founder of the Dagwan Wikimedia User Groups. Okay, I think your network is speaking. All right. All right, next person. The campaign and outreach manager for the user group. Okay, next. Hussein Mogis, Chirifu. Okay, so thank you all. 
and welcome once again. Today we are going to learn more about uh, the basic rules of editing Wikipedia and I will be taking you through some of the key principles that governs Wikipedia platforms and what we should all know as contributors to Wikipedia. This um, training is targeted at newbies and people who already have experience in editing the grand Wikipedia but wants to know more about how they can edit English Wikipedia. They are all the same. They're all Wikipedia languages are the same. The only difference is the language. So uh, uh, it is important as a community, we, we should know how to follow the guidelines or also follow the standard of the English Wikipedia, which is, which is like the biggest uh, of all the language Wikipedias we have. So I'm going to take you through um, this friendly policy. I think most of us are very familiar with that already uh, for art and feminism. Okay, so Wikipedia guidelines. Um, first, I would like to talk about the five pillars of Wikipedia. I will share this link so that people can go through and read more. If you, if you are a new person or you have just created your account and you logged on to Wikipedia, you realize that a lot of things are slightly different or you can't just like go and write anything on Wikipedia if you don't follow the principles of Wikipedia. So Wikipedia outlines their rules for editing in both the pillars and their core content policies. This guide is going to show you how you can um, follow these basic principles to be able to contribute effectively to Wikipedia. And then I will start by taking you through the five pillars, as I said. Um, yeah. So let me see, I need to remove my screen here. Something is coming on my screen. Okay. Okay. So let me go back. Yes, so Wikipedia, first, one of the most important thing we should know when we are editing Wikipedia is that Wikipedia is an online encyclopedia. Wikipedia is an encyclopedia. We have other encyclopedias. We have the Britannica and other encyclopedias that are offline. But Wikipedia happens to be an online encyclopedia and it's one of the biggest online encyclopedia, if not the number one. It contains many features of general and specialized encyclopedias, harmonics and gazettes. Wikipedia, um, as we all know, has its own policies and guidelines, and it's supposed to be followed strictly by community members or contributors. The second thing we must know is that Wikipedia is written from a neutral point of view. What do I mean by neutral point of view? When you are writing on Wikipedia, um, you don't need to stress or use extreme words or weasel words or things that either promote or condemns other topics or people. So we can write articles about places, people, plants, animals, living things and non-living things, anything you can think of, books and many other things. So when you are writing about things, you should be writing it from a neutral point of view. Articles should have um, content that does not, you know, promote people or businesses that as is commonly known by people. A lot of people think that when you have a page on Wikipedia, it's supposed to increase your sales. So you should write information that will promote your business and all that, which is wrong. If you want to write about a topic, you should make sure you are not related to that topic or you should be mindful of conflict of interest. Mm. Then the third one is Wikipedia is a free content that anyone can use or edit, distribute in any form that they like. Wikipedia contents are op freely licensed, CC by SC, which means you can share it, you can modify it, you can always come in and edit it. You don't have to be worried about who is um, on Wikipedia. I see a chat here. Let me see. Okay, that's an old chat. Okay, fine. So it's, it's something that anybody can edit. When you create an article, you don't need to 
should let people or write that I created the article or the article belongs to me so nobody can contribute or edit it. Wikipedia is not like that. Wikipedia editors should treat each other with respect and civility. Our community is very big. Those of us who are already in the um, platforms like Slack or um, um, you know, Telegram, you will realize that there are thousands of contributors to Wikipedia volunteers. Some of them are not even on those platforms. So when you are editing, you should be mindful of how you treat people or respond to people's uh, um, information when they post content on Wikipedia or when they write articles, you should be mindful. Even when we disagree, you have to apply the Wikipedia ethics. You have to engage people in good faith. You have to be able to, um, you know, come to a consensus, even if you're having, um, you know, arguments. Wikipedia, um, we have so many, oh, as at that, this time, I think we have more than five million, six million articles on Wikipedia. And there are different topics that uh, are covered on Wikipedia. So when you are specifically writing for political people or maybe things that relate to politics, and maybe there are things that do not reflect the, the topics you are writing about, people may come and argue or say things that uh, may not be um, friendly to you. So you need to be very patient. You need to listen to people. You should be able to understand yourself. That is how Wikipedia contributors treat each other. So these are the five pillars. The final one I will talk about is Wikipedia has no firm rules. A lot of people think that before they can write on Wikipedia, they need to do some research. They need to like do some searches to be able to get information or enough information to contribute to Wikipedia. It is not done like that. You just find the information online and then start writing. You should be bold. You should be bold. So the, that's the final one. Wikipedia has no firm rules. And then we'll move to the next, which is still going to dive deeper into all the things that I've highlighted. All Wikipedia articles must be written from a neutral point of view, as I indicated in my first presentation. And I have this tip that I will share with you, pro tip, like if you are going to write and maybe feel like you are being neutral, avoid stating opinions as facts and stating facts as opinions. This means opinions are opinions and facts are, of, uh, are facts. So don't miss, like use them. If, for example, you are writing about um, a footballer in Ghana, maybe you want to say, um, Dede Ayu, or maybe Jordan Ayu is the best player in the Black Stars team, you have to say it as it is, not in your own opinion. We don't have opinion. Wikipedia has no um, contributors. You don't have a strict opinion when you are writing about topics or people. So you cannot say Cristiano Ronaldo is the best player in the world or Messi is the best player in the world. It has to be based on a fact. It has to be based on a fact. You cannot use your opinion. So in your opinion, he's the best. In someone else's opinion, it is not. So use non-judgmental languages or language. Non-judgmental language or whistle words. So you sometimes you write and then people can easily depict what you are trying to say. It is either you are condemning that person or um, topic or you are promoting it. So you should be mindful of the kind of words that you use so that people cannot, uh, people will not see it, like, cannot easily identify whether they are judgmental or not. Use words that are plain. You don't need to use jargons or very um, deep language. It should be very like basic that anybody at all can understand and relate to. Then the third one, the tip, the third tip I will say is indicate the relative prominence of opposing views. So as I said, people are going to contribute to information, uh, contribute information on Wikipedia with different perspectives or views. So 
be mindful of um, other people's opinion. Then maintaining uh, verifiability. When we talk about verifiability in Wikipedia, it simply means that people reading and editing the encyclopedia can check that any information that you put there comes from a reliable uh, source. So you should always make sure you attribute your content to a reliable published source. This is what many of us have been doing already in the Dagban Wikipedia, which is great. So if, for example, you are going to give information about um, the topic, you are going to write about something, you should make sure you have a reliable source of information, which means you should get your references ready. Don't just put content and then leave it like that. You should be able to cite where you get that information from. And reliable sources, when we want to narrow that in, um, to our life in Ghana or what is happening in Ghana, can be the My Joy Online, the Peace FM Online, Justice FM Online, and all that. Those are kind of like reliable sources that we can always use to reference or cite articles. So another tip I would say is, um, <clears throat> Practice by adding citations and references to existing articles. If you are a new person, especially this particular training is centered around the English Wikipedia. So if you are a very new person to Wikipedia, try to add um, more references and citations on existing articles instead of starting new ones. For Dagbani, because it's not strict, our rules are pretty flexible. You can always read articles sometimes with little references and we are still good to go because we are still strict but we want to train people to be able to write quality content so let's try to match at least with the english standard so even if you don't know how to add uh, create new articles just start by adding references and citations that is how you can get comfortable with um ver uh, verified material that comes from reliable sources you'll be able to understand more which platforms are verifiable, which um, platforms are liable, which platform you can um, use to cite your references. Whilst you continue doing that, you'll be able to understand this better. Then, um, so that's <clears throat> the tip I will give for verifiability. No originality, please. So when you are writing articles, <clears throat> as I indicated, you don't need to do any rigorous, um, you know, um, research to be able to write on Wikipedia. Wikipedia does not publish original thoughts or original research. All materials must be linked to a reliable published source. This isn't journalism, <laughs> criticism or scholarship. So scholarly content or scholarly publications are quite different. Uh, journalistic artic articles or blog posts are written differently from Wikipedia or encyclopedic articles. So when you are writing, you don't need to do any rigorous research because we are, Wikipedia is not a primary source of information. It's a secondary source of information. So you are rather relying on primary source of information to be able to put content on Wikipedia. So why do you have to do a lot of research if you can easily write the information or content in your own language by citing um, from the primary source? So this is the reason why you cannot do um, some research or do some serious, you know, um, research around content that you put on Wikipedia. Try to be very simple and just be straight and bold. There's, there's another tip I would say is, let's say you are writing a paper that is not yet published about <coughs> Nazville. And the, the most feminist television, Nazville is a, is a te, um, television show. So if you can't support this thesis with published articles or books, you can't include it on Wikipedia, as simple as that. You are not writing it from scratch. You are only writing it based on the information you find or the primary source of information that you can find on the internet or books or journals. So if you go on the internet and you can't find anything about Nasvili, it means it is not 
qualified to be on Wikipedia because there's no primary information you can find about that topic. So avoid writing articles about just anything. <clears throat> Everything you want to write about should be a, a topic that is quite um, notable or something that you can easily fi find <clears throat> reliable references for. Um, let me see. So that is, I was trying to add some, all right, cool. So that is the third point, no originality, <clears throat> as I said. Wikipedia, you don't need any research to be able to write content on Wikipedia. Then, excuse me, <coughs> the, the fourth point, you don't promote people. You don't promote yourself, you don't promote your family, you don't promote your friends. This is uh, one of the most important things that we should know. It might be tempting to work with a topic you are directly involved in. You understand? But if you think that you might have a conflict of interest in that particular topic, don't even attempt creating that article. Let's say your father is a, is, is a notable person and you want to write about the person or your brother. Allow somebody to write about the person. You can still edit it or you can ping people to create it, but don't go and write it because if you are going to write about things that are related to you, you are definitely not going to be uh, neutral. So avoid promoting yourself or people. If you see su such kind of uh, content or article that you want to, I just refer that to other editors so they start it rather than you doing it yourself because you can um, violate the uh, what's the name? The com you, it can be conflict of interest, and you may not follow the neutral point of view um, point. So, for example, this one. Let's say <clears throat> I as I work for maybe art and feminism, and I want I realize that there's something wrong on art and feminism speech. Since this one can be very like possible that I may write. Um, things that will make them appear nice or something that will promote art and feminism. It can be conflict of interest because I'm directly associated with art and feminism. So I have to rather ping somebody or suggest that the person do the edit on the article stock page. I don't know if this is clear. That is how you can um, create articles without being biased. Let people do it on your behalf if you are related to that topic. Then the, the next point, which is the number five, reliable sources. What do we mean by reliable sources? A lot of times people hear, oh, when you are writing articles up on Wikipedia, you should cite from reliable sources, which are the thing, uh, like, which are, which of the sources that are more reliable than the other? What do we consider reliable sources in the first place? We need to first understand what reliable sources are. Um, yeah. So your source should be published secondary or tertiary source. As an unpublished material and interviews are not considered reliable, your best is to use academic and peer-reviewed publications. Most of times, people use um, interviews or press releases. If um, a news portal or um, like an, a media organization organizes or um, creates a program which allows them to interview like people, like celebrities, you cannot use those information as references because most of the questions that they are going to ask them are not going to be the exact thing that people are looking out for or the things that we want to know about them. They can lie. If you interview somebody, he can lie, he or she can lie about certain things. So it is very difficult to use interviews as references, even press releases. It is not advisable to use them as um, your references interview either um, text or video are not considered reliable sources. Rather, university level textbooks, books published by respected publishing houses, 
like those publishing houses that most of us know, either in Ghana or outside Ghana, magazines and journals. You can use magazines and then journals. You can use mainstream newspapers like Daily Guide, my, even online, My Joy Online, um, Peace FM Online, like I mentioned. At least these four categories are quite um, reliable and a lot of people can attest to the fact that these are peer uh, reviewed for new uh, mainstream media. They have editors who review to make sure content, to make sure that uh, all information are accurate and true. Uh, and true. And then a magazine, the same thing. They are reviewed before they are published. So these are things that we can always like refer to as um, reliable references. But like I said, interviews are just what the person says, whatever the person says, whether the person lied about their age or what they have is pasted or published as it's supposed to be or as they say it, you cannot edit somebody's interview. So we should avoid using such information as uh, references. And then the seat one, notability. How do we know if somebody is notable enough? How do we know? How do we know if somebody is notable enough? How do we know? Now, to be able to test notability, article topics needs to be verified by reliable sources. They should meet Wikipedia's notability guidelines, which state that the topic must have received significant, uh, significant coverage. Significant coverage as in mainstream media or any other forms form of uh, media. They should meet these specific guidelines for artists. So we have different types of notability criteria for different topics. We have notability um, guidelines or criteria for artists. We have notability guidelines for um, people, places, and things. Musicians, all of them have their own um, specific guidelines. So what you must know is that just because something doesn't pass these guidelines doesn't mean that it is not important. These guidelines reinforce structure, structural racism and sexism. The hist histories of black and brown people, queer, trans folks, uh, trans folks, etc., have often not received significant coverage. I think this is something that a lot of us know. Um, there's less content about black people there's less content about um, people from the minority um, communities like um, lesbians, gays, um, trans, and all that. You know, there's less content about them, even blacks or people from Africa, brown people. So this um, is one of the things that we should pay attention to. We should test the notability. Is the person notable? If the person is a musician, you need to follow the guidelines for musicians. There are certain things that um, they use to determine whether an artist is notable. For example, I created an article on Fancy Gadam some time back, and then later on people jumped in and like made a lot of um, silly contributions, which uh, um, made them to tag the article for deletion. Administrators tagged, them, uh, tagged the article for deletion. So we have to come and then um, argue or like, you know, let them know that the person is notable. How do you prove that? We always use the articles uh, talk page or discussion page to make our uh, submissions as to whether the person is notable or not. So people will have to come in and vote whether Fancy Gadam is notable or not. So later on, we discovered that um, the article should remain, or people voted that the article should remain, or it shouldn't be deleted. So those are some of the things. For artists, they may say that you should, you should have received a Grammy award, or uh, its equivalent, or you should have um, maybe have this number of albums, and things like that. Just going to fill the Tamale Stadium with huge crowd doesn't make you a notable artist. Honestly, on Wikipedia, it doesn't automatically make you an, um, a notable artist. As I said, there are different ways to test notability. You cannot assume that, oh, the person is uh, all over 
we all know him like people know the person by face like when you mention the person in this location like everybody knows him in the area you can't assume that until the person meets the notability uh, criteria that is if there are more information covered on the internet or other reliable sources about the person then you can consider that uh, notable enough so then let me go to the <coughs> A stab, I don't know how many of us know a stab. A stab is an article that is pretty like small. It doesn't have a lot of content. It, it has like less information. It, they are mostly too short. So if editors follow different rules to identify stab articles, some say that the, uh, an article with less than 10 sentences or less than 150 words isn't long enough to be an article and they, they may deem it a stab so something one article may be considered a, a stab and somebody may think that it is not a stab but generally articles that are too short to provide a full view of the subject is a stab i don't know if this is clear so for a stab you you cannot find um much information about the topic you cannot find much information about the topic so that is a stab <clears throat> i don't know if there's any question do you have any question any question about the wikipedia guidelines all that i mentioned like notability what is considered uh, notable and what is not um you know any question are we good to go can we all now create like articles using the five principles or following the five principles okay so i see there are no questions now i'm going to go practical I'm going practical and then we'll see how these things reflect in articles. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. Okay, so now I have to go through the I don't know if there's still any question that you want me to answer. No question. So let's go, let's dive in Wikipedia English. As I said, we, are, we want to use the English version of Wikipedia. So Wikipedia. Okay. So um, I'm going to use the Fancy Gadam's article. As for creating articles, is the same process as the Dagban, which uh, most of us already know. You first of all need to search about the topic and see whether it exists by using the search bar. Once you find the information, it means the article already exists. If it doesn't, you will be able to like start the article from the page. So I will refer you back to the Wikipedia article of fancy gather mm -hmm. uh, i'm not sharing my screen sorry let me share my screen okay so this is 
um, the article France Ghana. If you look at, this is what I want us to do, even though it's an English Wikipedia, but look at the structure of the article. As I always say, try to refer to the existing article in English so you'll be able to understand um, how Wikipedia articles are structured. So topics about people, you will definitely want to know more about the person's early life and career. If the person is a business person, it doesn't necessarily have to be music. Um, you will want to know about the person's um, personal life. You would want to know about awards, if the person has won any awards. You would want to know about academic education, educational background. You would want to know about the person's, um, what else? You know, so at, um, um, like early life, career, um, awards, um, personal life, etc. These are things that you would want to put. There's no really like a strict formality as to how you should structure it. Structure it. Some people will start with early life and then go down and put career. Others will just put it early life and career. All are good. So there's no strict rules guiding this. But just make sure um, biographies about people should have this kind of thing that I mentioned. When somebody uh, talks about a, a person or an individual or a notable person, what are some of the things that people would want to see? What are some of the things that people would want to see or know about the person? Definitely, it will be about the person's early life, education, career, and then personal life. Personal life can contain information about their marital status, or uh, maybe um, they are like, I don't know, after marital status, or maybe, you know, social life. Some of the things that they do outside their career can be categorized under personal life, their religious background. Yeah. So these are things that we all need to know when we are writing articles, whether it's English or Dagban Wikipedia. Once you abide by these rules, I think it will help us to be able to improve on the quality of articles we put on the Dagban Wikipedia. So this training is specifically for Dagban Wikipedia contributors, but anybody who gets a uh, hold of this um, you know, video can make use of it because we are using the English uh, Wikipedia as the case study. So we already know about info boxes. It's not compulsive that every article you create should have an info box or data box. There are articles, if you don't have it, don't force yourself. But if you can find it, try and put the info box at least. Things that refers to their birth name, where they were born, origin, occupation, and label. So info boxes are uh, snippets of information that um, a main article will have or every um, article would have. So this is an example of a, a very good in, uh, info box. And then um, let's go to the first paragraph. When you open the first paragraph, this is how it's structured. So biographies about people, you may want to start like this, one minute. And Mujahid Ahmed Bello, born um, 16th August 1988. If you don't know, you are not sure about the person's date of birth, it is not composite that you put it there. If, let's say, we don't know when he was born, you can just say Mujahid Ahmed Bello, known by his stage name, Fancy Gadam. So there are two things here which does not necessarily have to reflect in every Wikipedia article where he was or when he was born and then if he has other names. There are people, their names are just like that. Sadiq Shahadu is Sadiq Shahadu everywhere. Um, John Dramani Mahama is John Dramani Mahama. You cannot say John Dramani Mahama known as, unless he has an alias. Uh, if the person doesn't have an alias, just go ahead by saying um, Mujahid Ahmed Bello. If you don't know the date of birth, then just go straight to Mujahid Ahmed Bello, known by his stage name. That is if he has an alias. If not, you say Mujahid Ahmed Bello is a Ghanaian Afro pop dancehall and reggae musician or musical artist. As simple as that. 
So this encompasses other things that I said you can include, but not necessarily on any article. The date of birth and the alias. So if you don't have it, you just go ahead. Mohamed Ahmed Bello uh, is a Ghanaian Afro pop dance hall and reggae musical artist. Simple as that. That's the intro of an article. These are articles. So they are supposed to be very like um, closer to each other. It's every uh, introduction of an article should have these kind of features. Depend on which person you are writing or which topic you are writing about. I don't know if this makes a lot of sense. Um, then um, the next thing I would like to talk about is so here they proceeded to say in 2017 he won Ghana Music Awards for uh, awards for best new artist. As you can see, there's a reference to what I said because I am quoting his date of birth and I'm quoting his uh, alias and I'm saying that he's a Ghanaian Afro pop. So these are things that you cannot do without a reference. If I say he was born on this day, what is the proof? I need to be able to provide a proof. And also if I say um, his alias name or other name is, um, is Fancy Gadam, I have to prove. You can't just go and say somebody name is um, Fancy Gadam. And then another name is this, when truly it is not the case. So make sure you provide a reference to that. And then if I say he's a Ghanaian Afro pop dance or reggae <coughs> musical artist, I should be able to provide a reference for that. So these are some of the things that <coughs> you should always provide references for, even on the Dagban Wikipedia. The second section talks about his award, which has also been referenced. There's a reference to that. And then the third reference talks about winning the Afro Entertainer at the International Reggae and World Music Awards. Now let's go to the second um, section which talks about his early life. Fancy Gadam was born in Hausa Zongo, a suburb of Kamali, the capital town of Northern Ghana. He completed his basic education at the police barracks basic school in Tamale. Fancy Gadam started his music career at the age of 12 as a performer at schools and uh, public events. This has one reference to indicate that he was, <coughs> he was born in Hausa Zongo. As I said, Wikipedia is not your primary source of information. <coughs> I don't need to come here and write it as though it is my own opinion. I'm just picking that information from a reliable primary source, which is when I hover around it, um, profile ability. I think that's a website. I can just open it to find more information about that um, reference or what I use there. So things like this, always try to find your references. I'm not saying that every line you put, you should, um, put a reference, but there are things about where he was born, where he comes from, the schools they attended, you know, things like that. You can't just come and say it like that and walk away. Try to put a reference so people can know where you are citing from. Notable performances. Here, the same way, you have to put your references, make sure. But if you look at how this one is structured, it is all followed in a very simple and plain language. You don't come and write big words or make people feel like you know how to write English. At the end of the day, we are just looking at the understanding of the people. So as I was talking about the Wikipedia voice, these are some of the things that I'm talking about, Wikipedia voice. Um, let me just use an example here. On December 2017, on December 2017, so if we were writing this in Dagban, what would you say? December Gwale and Dahan Yeni 2017 Pune, Fancy Gadam Daniela, headline um, artist Nzanti, S con concert, Kora performing. But I just want you to understand how the voice should sound. So I'm writing it from, this is a plain language and from a very, um, a neutral point of view without being extreme or promotional, you understand? So this is just all that I'm trying to say. 
So on December 2017, Fancy Gadam was one of the headline artists at the S concert when he um, performed at the early, to the early hours of Saturday, December. So when you go to the, um, the reference, you see more information about he performing to the early hours. I am using this because I don't want to put it in a way that makes it look like he did extreme or he did so well that uh, I should say, say it so that that would make people, it would make people like want to feel like he's the best or he has done something so special. It has to be as plain as it is. It's okay to say things about people that they have done, but it should be factual. It should be factual. His dream album launch and concert on um, October 5th pulled over 20,000 fans to the Ali Mahama Stadium. So here, somebody who belongs to the Gadam Nation team may want to write it like Francis Gadam was the the, was the only artist in Tamale to have pulled 20,000 people um, to the Tamale Stadium or Ali Muhammad Stadium. You see, when you put it that way, it means you are just um, writing promotional content. This clearly also says that, yes, he did it like this, but this is how it's supposed to be written. I don't know if you have any questions about this. Studio albums, you have to highlight them and then give a reference. Awards, even awards, you need to give references. You need to give references to that. Any question? I think we are six minutes ahead of time. I'm going to, if there are no questions, I would like to stop the recording. So let me know if you have any question about notability and then the five pillars of Wikipedia. As I indicated, this is in relation to the Dagban Wikipedia specifically. So whatever we are learning here is supposed to be used to like contribute content to the Dagban Wikipedia. So if there are no questions, I would like to stop the recording. Hi. Hello. Yes, this uh, is there any difference between the info box and data box? Yes, so for info box, they, even though they all uh, look the same or they all pull uh, snippets of information about people, places, or articles, data box okay. connects or takes content from Wikidata. When you put data box, it means you are taking the content directly from Wikidata onto the Wikipedia article. But for info boxes, we have info, info boxes are templates that are already created for different people. So we have info box for people, info box for places where you can just copy it and then edit it with the person's name, uh, date of birth, uh, occupation awards and all those things depend on the person we have info box for politicians we have info box for musicians and all that so info boxes are just like um, data boxes but the difference is that data box takes content or these information from wikidata data box takes content or information from wikidata so when i put a data box it means whatever i picked from that um, on, whatever I added on that article is taken from Wikidata directly, but info boxes oh. are not connected to Wikidata. They are already like existing template that you can just put. But the power of data box is so huge because data box, other thing that you would want to do, you you wouldn't you just put the te uh, the template data box at the top of the article with so using a um, you know source code and then it will automatically do the whole thing for you unlike info box where you have to paste the template and then manually edit it yourself 
if you have to add image, you have to copy the image and add it to the info box. But for data box, if the image is already on Wikidata item of that particular person, once, once you link the in, um, data, you add the data box to the article itself on Wikipedia, it will automatically pick every information, including the image onto the Wikipedia articles. I don't know if this has answered your yes, question. Yes, yes. I'm satisfied okay. with your answer. Thank you. All right. So to be able to, if you don't know how to add data boxes, uh, but still wants to add info boxes or this kind of information on articles, the best thing to do, as I said, you can find info boxes about people when you search on Wikipedia or just search info boxes about politicians. You find them and then edit it. You understand? You can always find it. Or you just pick an existing uh, info box. For example, I want to write about Macasio. Let me see. I know that they are all musicians, right? So the easiest way to add an info box of Macasio in his Wikipedia article is to first edit. I have to check Fancy Gadam's info box. So this is the easiest way to add info boxes to people. And as I said, no, if you are doing, you are adding info box of a musician, you see that here it says what? Info box, musical artist. Info box, musical artist. So yeah. that means the information that I will see here about the person is related to artist or musical artist. So it will have components of a musical artist, for example, um, in instrument, occupation, genre, um, year, years active, label, associated acts. These are things that you can really relate to when you are talking about musicians. So this is an info box of a musician. So if I want to add an info box to Macasio's article or another artist article, I just need to highlight from the top here, info box with two curly brackets all down to the end of that closing curly bracket. So here, I'll copy this one. Wikipedia is most of the times copy and paste. So I'll just copy the whole of this. Then I open Macasio's um, article. Then I'll paste it there. Then once I paste it there, I'll come to name. Instead of Fancy Gadam, I change it to at Macasio. Far. Okay. I'll look for Macasio's file if I have it, but it's not composite that you fill everything. Whatever information you have, you fill it. So if I have Macasio's image, I'll copy this one and replace it with Macasio's image. And then birth name, I'll change it to Macasio's birth name. Native name, I'll change it. Language, I'll keep it because they are all the homeless. Date of birth, I need to change it like this. So if you don't want to worry yourself, just learn to copy. So if I, you are writing about a politician and you want to add an info box of a politician. Even on the Dagban Wikipedia, we have several info boxes created already. So you can just pick them and then add it to the article, provided they are all relating to the same, um, you know, topic like musicians or um, a politician. So this is how info boxes works. For data box, all I needed to do was to just put data box. So this one, I'll just put this whole of, the, in, the info box will not be here if I was adding data box. I'll just um, come to the top of this. Anytime you see two curly bracket, it means that particular information is a template. Two curly bracket open and close is, is, is a template. So if I was adding a data box, I'll do this data, oops, I'll type it like this data box then I'll, I'll close it like this so if i put this without the info box into which um fancy Gadam's article what would happen it means i'm saying that it should take the wikidata let me go to wikidata if you can still see my screen i will switch to wikidata right now um, I'm going to switch to Wikidata right now. Oops. 
So I'll switch to Wikidata. Okay, this is a Wikidata. I'll open it in a new tab. Oops. Okay, so I'm trying to maximize this. Okay, so if I use the code Wikidata uh, or data box, whatever information that is going to be at the section of the info box would be coming from here. Fancy gather. It will generate the info box using this information here together with the image. So that way, if it's a data box, I don't need to edit anything. I will just put data box and to put all this information together in a very structured form. In a very structured form. It will put, it will just take the most relevant information from this um, Wikidata item and then fix it nicely as an info box, which is a data box actually. So that is the difference between data box and um, info box. I don't know if that answers other questions. Any more question? We are done for now. Any more question? Okay, so we are ready. Hello. Hello. Please, uh, I want to ask how can we move an article from start? Okay, that's a very good question. A stop article. When is the, when is stop? Let me see. Sorry, I don't know if it's one is still. Sorry. I'm looking for a stop article. So usually when you open a stop article, you see the, the, the notification below that the article is a stop. So I'm looking for just a very simple stop article. Um, who can we look for? Can anyone think of a stop article? Let me see if uh, this one has a stop article. Yeah, so usually to, to, to take a stop, an article from stop, as I said, stop articles are articles that are not generally um, rich in content or information about that topic. So if I'm writing about Sharifa and I don't have her early career, her musical life, and I just put the first line, let's say Sharifa Gunu was born in the kingdom of Dagbon in northern region of Ghana into a royal family. She left school at the end um, stage and later competed in both regional and national dance competitions. So this alone, even when I add a music, um, musical career, it still makes it like a stab because it doesn't have a lot of information about it, about her. So what do I do? You will see that there's a stab, then they will tell you that this article is a stab. This um, contribute to it to improve it there will always be a notification below so to be able to move it out of the staff you just add the section that are supposed to be added then it has uh, that means you have improved the article then you just take off the staff someone else will do it for you so when you see staff articles let me search and see staff. i want to see staff good example stop articles mm. 
Ghana. Let me see if I can find a stab article from Ghana. Okay, let me see this one. This is not a star article. Aha. Uh -huh. So this is, can you see here? This article relates to article in a tab. You can help Wikipedia by expanding it. So all stab articles are always like this. And it is showing this because the, there's a category here added as Ghana stabs. So if you create a new article and you think that it's not good, you should add this category to it. To add the category, just click on the plus sign like this and type Ghana stab. Uh -huh. You can even search for the more templates on stab, but Ghana stab would, when I click OK, will add the stab to it as it has been added here. So when they say by expanding it, that means you have to expand the article, you have to edit it. So when I click on it by expanding it link, it will open the article for me to edit. It will open the article for me to edit. So this is how we expand um, stops. If I want to remove it after I've edited it, I've added all the relevant information and I want to remove the star, I'll just click on edit source. I'll click on edit source. Then I come down. So there are two ways to do that. One way is the source editing. I, don't most, I know most of you don't really <laughs> like using. You see, this is the template for Ghana stab. I can just delete this one. I can take it off to, to remove the stab. Or if you want to add a stab into an article, switch to source code and just paste or take, uh, type this there. That's one way you can remove a stab. Also, I can come here in that same article. I can come here and then you know, maybe you cannot remove it here, but administrators can easily remove it from here. But the easiest way to add it or remove it is to just delete it as a category in the template as I opened, uh, as I showed in my um, screen. So that is how you improve or expand stuffs. And once you are done with expansion, you can take it away from the article. I don't know if this answers your question. Any other question? So when you click on Ghana stabs, it is a category where you see all articles that are stabs. You see? All these articles are found in the category of stops, you see. So, if you are someone who wants to be editing stop articles, just go to Ghana stops category. You can see a chunk of them. You can open any of them, and then um, you know you can edit it. There are chunk of. You can even go to next page. They are categorized in alphabetical order. So you see. It has, this is a Ghanaian cuisine related to stab. You can expand it as they always say. So that is how you find stabs and that is how you can edit to improve them and then take them off once they are, you know, fully um, written or maybe they have improved. So any other question? Any other question? 
before I turn off the recording. It's been more than one hour. So I would like to end this call if there are no questions. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Can you all hear me? So I was muted yes. for a while. I didn't know that I was muted. Did you? Munkala, where did I stop? Where did I mute myself? Sorry, I didn't know I muted myself. Well, for me, I, I, for me, I didn't, I continue hearing it up. So, you were muted. Yes, I had everything. When the nature was having some problems, okay. but I had a talk. Okay, so you, you had everything I said about this. Yeah, I had everything. Great. All right, thank you. So, I'm going to you now. Thank you so much for making it to this committee meeting. I hope we meet next time again. Thank you.